Now our co-host today is an acclaimed journalist creating media content through impactful storytelling. Being a part of the media landscape for over two decades, he is the founder of a media group helping brands build their persona in the Middle East. Please welcome Abhishek Sengupta to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for that kind introduction. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. So we're going to jump straight in. Obviously, COP28 sure. is happening. And I was just wondering if you could give us some insights and a little breakdown as to what has happened over the weekend. It's been a very, very interesting COP28. I think um, it started with, uh, for the first time in history, a 3D hologram of uh, the founding father of the UAE, Sheikh Zayed, the late Sheikh Zayed, addressing uh, the VIPs. We had King Charles III uh, address and, and I listened to that speech as well where he said that we are dreadfully off track and things have to be done. Mm -hmm. um, he also spoke about how the future generation is going to look at us for what we did and what we didn't. So those are very, very sort of moving uh, opening remarks if you like. And then uh, there was uh, a lot of follow up on what were promised last year at Sharm el-Sheikh in COP27, Paris Agreement that was way back in 2015. So Dubai, in more ways than one, is going to speed things up. And that is what COP28 is all about. And of course, there have been slew of, uh, of deals and, and agreements and funds that have been pledged by different uh, governments. UAE on the first day pledged, in fact, instituted a $30 billion fund for mm -hmm. climate action. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a separate almost $450 million fund um, for loss and damage. Uh, it's called the loss and damage fund. We talked about it last year in Sharm el-Sheikh. Now, if that was a blueprint, if you like, it's now got some shape and form this year at the COP28. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, you know, when you go back in history, COP1 started in 95, a, a very young Angela Merkel was the president that year, 1995 Berlin. And since then, we've had the Kyoto Protocol in 97, we had Paris in 2015. And I believe, and not because I've been a resident of Dubai for 17 years and I love Dubai to bits, but objectively speaking, I believe there, there is going to be some genuine outcomes over these 12 days at COP28. Mm -hmm. Lots happening, to be yeah. honest. Um, and as you mentioned a little bit earlier on, there's so many dignitaries who've been visiting. I want to understand a little bit more about the actual goal of COP28, because I was just watching a clip that the world-renowned spiritual leader, Sadhguru, mentioned mm. um, during the inaugural speech at COP28. He mentioned that COP28 is not an absolute solution, but an effort mm. towards spreading awareness about climate change and climate action. Uh, absolutely. In fact, funnily enough, I have been spending the last few weeks in the run-up to COP28 at different uh, events across the country. A couple of weeks back, I was, I was at a Sharjah uh, tourism uh, event. Just last week, I was in Abu Dhabi at the Abu Dhabi Finance Week. Now, there, if you look at it, they're completely unrelated to climate change talks. Mm -hmm. But COP28 has become the talk of not just town, but the entire country and the region. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a lot of awareness. People are talking about it. And one good thing that COP28 has done is it's, it's got everyone involved, average Joes, if you like, talk about climate change. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, um, uh, a COP has a lot of themes happening. Like yesterday, they spoke about health. Today, they talk, they're talk. they talking about gender, gender equality. equality. So what are some of the things that they're going to be discussing throughout the week that we yeah. should look forward to as well? Yeah, I, I was reading and, and I haven't been to COP yet. And yes. I hope that I, I'm going to change that track record now over the next few days. But what I've read about COP is that this is by far the most inclusive COP. Mm -hmm. So it, talk, it just... I mean, it's not just about climate change that they're talking. They've brought in, they've touched upon health. That was uh, Bill Gates yesterday. In fact, they pledged a $777 fund, which we talked about. Uh, they're talking about gender equality. Mm -hmm. They're talking about every uh, other social um, factors yes. that sort of, uh, you know, uh, today's headline was leaders have met to keep the planet alive. Mm -hmm. So everything that makes us uh, strive for a healthier and a more prosperous future 
is going to be talked about yeah. at the COP28. Even food that you're going to eat at COP28, I was hearing a, a little bit of chatter on the radio the other day, is vegan and they're in fact telling you how the foods that you're eating has been grown sustainably. Yeah, yeah. So you are actually sort of, without knowing, you are part of a whole new movement. Yeah, definitely, because also tomorrow is World Soil Day yes. and agriculture. They're going to be talking about all of this. Even something that is very important is homegrown food. Mm. Exactly. And this will help with the carbon frit, uh, yeah. frit, footprint, uh, yeah. footprint to be yeah. lowered down, especially exactly. worldwide. If everyone grows their own local yeah. Yeah. food, is going to be yeah. uh, significantly. What's good. happening is you read about these terms. You come across, I mean, on food packaging and stuff. But this is an event where you're actually going to experience it first first hand you're going to see what literally sustainable homegrown products mean sure. how are they grown i was just reading an article about uh, someone's growing purple chilies mm. at cop 28 now that's intriguing yes but the story of how it's grown sustainably in a desert like the uae i mean typically it is still a desert is the story that in interests everybody. You don't have sure. to be a, a climate action specialist, if you like, to know or to find out what's what's behind the story. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, you just mentioned that you don't need to be a specialist. And yeah. how much awareness is it going to sp uh, spread towards the average consumer like ourselves? And also, how much accountability will some of the bigger companies out there who have a lot of the times been accused of greenwashing yeah. their brands, pretending to be more environmentally friendly than they are, how much accountability will be taken by them? No, that's a very good question. In fact, a lot of people, and there are always different factions who will question everything that you do and I've heard a lot of stories against COP in general whether they actually achieve anything at all mm -hmm. uh, but the fact remains that there's a lot of talk about NDCs nationally determined contributions every country will now have to review their NDCs which is a five-year plan on how you decarbonize how you sort of upscale your uh, renewable energy plans so every country is now accountable. And when I say every country, every corporate in that country will fall in line, will have to fall in line. Yeah. And what COP28 has done is there, there have been spin-offs now. I was just uh, on my way to the studio today. I was listening to another uh, podcast and UAE is now organizing another event which is going to incorporate climate education for children. Mm. And it is very, very important. Yes. We suddenly now feel that there is a need for understanding climate as part of a curriculum in schools. And that is going to then make us a more conscious generation yeah. going forward. Yeah, we still have a lot to talk about, but let's see what's coming up. Coming up, we have a consumer engagement specialist here to discuss her mission during COP28. Plus, a very talented artist is going to sing for us tonight, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> 